Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. The White House is struggling to explain President Trump's shifting accounts of his relationship with Stephanie Clifford, also known as Stormy Daniels, the adult film star who claimed she had a sexual affair with Donald Trump in 2006 and then was hushed. Trump acknowledged for the first time Thursday he reimbursed his lawyer and fixer, Michael Cohen, for a 130000 hush money payment Cohen made to Daniels on the eve of the 2016 election. Trump's admission came after another one of his lawyers, former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani, made the revelation about Trump's payment during an interview Wednesday evening on Fox News. At the White House, Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders struggled Thursday when asked by reporters about Trump's earlier claims he had no knowledge of the payments. This was information that the president didn't know at the time, but eventually learned. Uh, the president has denied and continues to deny the underlying claim. And again, I've given the best information I had at the time. And I would in. refer you back to the comments that you yourself just mentioned uh, a few minutes ago about the timeline okay. from Mayor Giuliani. Yes. Giuliani's admission that Trump repaid Cohen caught many White House officials and Trump's allies off guard. On Fox News, host Neil Cavuto, a longtime advocate for the Trump administration, appeared to turn on Trump and Giuliani on Thursday. How can you drain the swamp if you're the one who keeps muddying the waters? You didn't know about that $130,000 payment to a porn star until you did. Said you knew nothing about how your former lawyer, Michael Cohen, handled this until acknowledging today you were the guy behind the retainer payment that took care of this. You insist that money from the campaign or campaign contributions played no role in this transaction. Of that, you're sure. Thing is, not even 24 hours ago, Ago, sir, you couldn't recall any of this, and you seem very sure. Now, I'm not saying you're a liar, you're president, you're busy. I'm just having a devil of a time figuring out which news is fake. That's Neil Cavuto of Fox News. Legal analysts say Michael Cohen's $130,000 payment to Stormy Daniels likely amounted to a campaign finance violation, since it constituted a loan to Trump's campaign that went unreported in federal election filings. President Donald Trump and Vice President Mike Pence are headed to Dallas, Texas, today, where they're set to address an annual convention convention of the National Rifle Association. The Secret Service has banned firearms, knives and other weapons from today's event, which comes on the heels of high-profile mass shootings, including last October's massacre in Las Vegas, the worst in modern U.S. history, and the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School massacre in Florida, which sparked a national movement of students protesting for gun control laws. Last year, Trump became the first U.S. president since Ronald Reagan to address the NRA. In the Arabian Peninsula, U.S. Army Green Berets secretly deployed to Yemen last December and are helping the the Saudi-led coalition seek out and destroy ballistic missiles held by Houthi rebels. That's according to an exposé on the front page of The New York Times today, which reports the operation contradicts Pentagon claims the U.S. is limiting its involvement in Yemen to refueling logistics and intelligence sharing with Saudi Arabia and its allies. More than 15,000 Yemenis have been killed since the Saudi-led coalition intervened in Yemen in March 2015. U.S.-backed Saudi-led airstrikes have devastated Yemen's health, water and sanitation systems sparking a massive cholera outbreak. It's believed more than a million Yemenis have cholera and pushing millions to the brink of starvation. In Syria, anti-government rebels have evacuated areas of Homs province in a Russian-brokered deal that will grant them safe passage to another rebel hull part of Syria. The surrender came amidst a withering assault by Syrian forces. In the Gaza Strip, Israeli forces opened fire with tear gas and live bullets today, as Palestinians continued mass protests against Israel's occupation. Haaretz newspaper reports at least three people were injured by live fire. The latest crackdown came after a Palestinian teen shot by an Israeli sniper on April 27th died from his wounds on Thursday. Medics say 19-year-old Anas Abu Asr is the 49th Palestinian killed by Israeli fire since mass protests began at the end of March. At least two journalists are among the dead. More than 1,000 protesters have been injured. Palestinian medics told Al Jazeera at least 24 people have had their limbs amputated after they were hit by a new kind of ammunition, so-called butterfly bullets, which which explode on impact, shattering bones and shredding internal organs. 
The New York Times reports President Trump has ordered the Pentagon to prepare a plan to reduce the number of U.S. troops stationed in South Korea. The report came as the U.S. and North Korea are making plans for an unprecedented summit between Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un to be held in May or June. This week, reports emerged that three U.S. citizens imprisoned in North Korea have been relocated to a hotel in Pyongyang ahead of their imminent release. President Trump's lawyer Rudy Giuliani had said the trio would have been released yesterday. Tony Kim, Tim Hak Sung and Kim Dong Chul were convicted on espionage charges and sentenced to two uh, long prison terms. It's believed North Korea is preparing to return them to the U.S. as a goodwill gesture. The U.S. Justice Department charged a former Volkswagen CEO with criminal conspiracy Thursday over his role in rigging diesel engines to circumvent air pollution standards. A federal grand jury indictment unsealed in Detroit says CEO Martin Vinterkorn knew in 2014 that his company's cars contained software that lowered carbon dioxide emissions under testing conditions, even though the car's emissions rose dramatically under real-world conditions. Volkswagen has admitted to rigging some 11 million vehicles worldwide. The auto market, ha the automaker, has already paid $26 billion in fines and civil damages and faces a $10 billion lawsuit by shareholders. In Arizona, tens of thousands of public school employees have ended a week-long strike after Republican Governor Doug Ducey signed a budget bill that will grant teachers and school staffers a 20 percent raise by 2020. The bill will also raise spending on education by another $138 million. The teachers have been demanding the restoration of $1 billion in funding cuts to Arizona's public schools since the 2008 recession. The New York Times reports teacher pay in Arizona is so low that administrators have in recent years recruited teachers from the Philippines to work in public schools under the U.S. J-1 visa program. The winner of the National Teacher of the Year Award held a silent protest Thursday against the Trump administration's policies, as she was honored by the president in a White House ceremony. Mandy Manning wore uh, six politically-themed buttons as she accepted her award from Trump, while billionaire Education Secretary Betsy DeVos looked on. Manning's buttons featured artwork from the 2017 Women's March, a rainbow flag, and the slogan, Trans Equality Now. She later presented Trump with a stack of letters from her students, teenage refugees at Joel E. Ferris High School in Spokane, Washington. After her protest, Manning told USA Today, quote, I am here for refugee and immigrant students, for the kids in the Gay-Straight Alliance, and for all the girls I've coached over the years. Hawaii's Kilauea volcano erupted Thursday, spewing lava into a residential neighborhood and triggering dozens of earthquakes. The eruption on Hawaii's Big Island caused levels of dangerous gas sulfur dioxide to spike, prompting a mandatory evacuation for at least 1,700 people. In India, the death toll from heavy rainfall and a major dust storm has risen to 127, as officials blamed heat wave conditions for extreme weather that came weeks ahead of the normal monsoon season. The deaths came days after an unprecedented heat wave in neighboring Pakistan saw temperatures in parts of the country climb above 50 degrees Celsius Monday, or 122 degrees Fahrenheit, an all-time record for Pakistan. <clears throat> the extreme weather came, as Oxfam reported, wealthy countries have contributed only about half of a $100 billion target pledged under the Paris Climate Accord to help poorer nations reduce their greenhouse gas emissions and adapt to a warmer planet. <clears throat> Activists with Black Lives Matter have called a nationwide protest today against Waffle House restaurants after a viral video showed the violent arrest of an African-American patron by a pair of white police officers in Alabama. The incident occurred April 22nd at a Waffle House in suburban Mobile, where employees called police after 25-year-old African-American woman, Shakisha Clemens, objected to a 50-cent charge for plastic utensils. In cell phone video shot by Clemens' friend, the officers are seen pinning Clemens to the ground, exposing her breasts, as one of them says, I'll break your arm, that's what I'm about to do. What are you doing? Man. I'm about to break your arm. That's what I'm about to do. You're about to break my arm? 
Protesters are demanding charges of disorderly conduct and a resisting arrest against Clemens be dropped. They're also demanding discipline for employees who were part of the incident, access to police video, and a statement from Waffle House denouncing how Clemens was arrested. Protesters say they'll spend just $2 to purchase sodas they can occupy seats at Waffle House restaurants nationwide during peak business hours today. Meanwhile, the White House said this week it's working to set up a meeting between President Trump and James Shaw, Jr., a 29-year-old African-American resident of Nashville, Tennessee, who's been credited with saving many lives after he wrestled an assault rifle from a gunman as a mass shooting at a Waffle House last month, also on April 22nd. The White House's overture came after Trump came under criticism for remaining silent over the heroic actions of Shaw, who is African-American. A fund-me site was set up for Shaw, who also was injured by the gunman. He gave all of the money to the families of the victims of the mass shooting. In Charlottesville, Virginia, a jury has found 34-year-old Georgia resident Alex Michael Ramos guilty of malicious wounding over his role in the parking lot beating of DeAndre Harris, a 20-year-old African-American man who was brutally assaulted by white supremacists at a far-right protest in Charlottesville, Virginia, last August. Photos and video show at least six white supremacists punching, kicking and beating Harris with large metal poles. Ramos is the first person convicted for the assault. He faced up to 20 years in prison, but a jury sentenced him to a six-year uh, but a jury sentenced him to a six-year term with no fine. Even though he was badly beaten, Harris was arrested on a felony charge of unlawful wounding after the assault. In March, he was acquitted of charges. Meanwhile, ProPublica reports that an active-duty U.S. Marine was among the far-right protesters in Charlottesville last summer. The news site published a selfie photograph of 18-year-old Vasilios Pist Pistolas in his Marine uniform, revealing he's a member of the neo-Nazi group Atomwaffen. After the Charlottesville protests, Pistolas bragged about assaulting transgender activist Emily Gorsensky, who came out to confront the Unite the Right rally. The state of Georgia is set to execute condemned prisoner Robert Earl Butts, Jr. tonight. Earlier this week, Georgia's parole board issued a 90-day stay to examine his case. But then, 18 hours later, the board lifted its own stay. Butts will become the 1,475th person to be executed in the United States since the death penalty was reinstated in 1976. New York Mayor Bill de Blasio is backing a plan that would see the city become the first in the U.S. to open supervised injection sites for intravenous drug users. The plan is aimed at ending an epidemic of overdoses, mostly from opioids, which saw more than 1,400 deaths in New York City last year alone. Cities in Canada and Europe say they've succeeded in cutting overdose deaths while combating HIV, hepatitis and other viruses by setting up safe injection programs. And news from Capitol Hill, House Chaplain Patrick Conroy has rescinded his resignation just two weeks after House Speaker Paul Ryan demanded he resign. On Thursday, Ryan said Conroy can remain in his position. According to The Washington Post, Ryan initially forced Conroy into retirement over a prayer the chaplain delivered last November, while the House was debating a Republican tax bill that overwhelmingly favored wealthy Americans. May their efforts these days guarantee that there are not winners and losers under new tax laws, but benefits balanced and shared by all Americans. And in Georgia, a federal court has filed an indictment against seven Catholic plowshares activists who were arrested for protesting last month at Kings Bay Naval Base, the largest nuclear submarine base in the world. The activists entered the base on the 50th anniversary of the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King, April 4th. They were armed with just hammers, crime tape and baby bottles containing their own blood. The activists said they were following the prophet Isaiah's command to beat swords into plowshares. In a statement from Georgia's Camden County Jail, plowshares activist Claire Grady wrote, quote, We say the ultimate logic of Trident is omnicide. And yet the explosive power of this weapon is only part of what we want to make visible. We see that nuclear weapons kill every day by their mere existence. We see the billions of dollars it takes to build and maintain the Trident system as stolen resources, which are desperately needed for human needs. 
And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman.